Sonic 3 Air. If you're gonna play Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you play Sonic 3 Air. Sonic 3 Air, or Angel Island Revisited, is undoubtedly the best way to play Sonic 3 out there. And yeah, I know, I skipped Sonic CD. I never said I'd be doing these in order, but we'll get to it. Just hold your horses. I want to talk about this game first. Like the versions I've covered up to this point, it's a PC port of the game with tons of extra features and cool stuff added, but Sonic 3 Air is actually the oldest of all these projects, and so it is the most refined and most feature-rich, with tons of customization options for all kinds of stuff. It's particularly nice for Sonic 3 & Knuckles because the two individual games, Sonic 3 and Sonic & Knuckles, have differences than when they're put together to be Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Certain things were changed or removed, mainly like music and boss fights and minor level design adjustments here and there. And some people prefer the things from, you know, the base versions of Sonic 3 or Sonic and Knuckles. Well, Sonic 3 Air lets you pick whatever you want from any of these different versions and mix them, match them to make it whatever you want, as well as having extra stuff from later games and also just new content in general made specifically for this version of the game. So in short, Sonic 3 Air is almost perfect. The only unfortunate thing about it is Sonic 3 never got the remake treatment that the other classic games did, which isn't a huge problem. Sonic 3, as it was, was already the most polished and refined of the original games. It really just means that every now and then you're unfortunately going to run into a little bit of a physics bug, kind of like this. But it's not very frequent and it's not that big of a deal, so whatever. And besides, you'd have to deal with that anyway if you're playing the original version, so yeah. Sonic 3 Air, that's what you play. So let's not waste any more time. Sonic 3K, what's new and added for this game? Well, mechanically, pretty much everything is identical to what it was before, so let's just cover the new moves and abilities in this game, which there's not really that much. The only new ability added for Sonic is that he can do the Insta Shield, where if you just press jump again while you're in the air, Sonic does that little flash there, and that increases the size of his hitbox for a moment and also briefly makes him invincible. Good for avoiding obstacles or hitting enemies or bosses in situations where you wouldn't really normally be able to, but that's pretty much it. It doesn't have that much utility, it just has its, you know, certain edge case scenarios where it can be pretty useful. The other major new gameplay feature for Sonic 3K is that now instead of just a shield that protects you from one hit, there's actually now three shields, all elemental themed. A normal base shield is gone. We have now a bubble shield, an electric shield, and a fire shield. And in addition to protecting you from a single hit, they all have unique special attributes. So the fire shield will protect you from fire attacks, the electric shield will protect you from electricity, and the bubble shield lets you breathe underwater. So that's all cool and hunky-dory and actually gives the shields a lot more real utility where you can use them to speed through areas you normally wouldn't be able to go through as quickly because now you can completely ignore certain obstacles, letting you get through the area much faster. But you still can't get totally careless because if you get hit by something that the element doesn't protect from, then you obviously lose that shield and thus lose that invulnerability. So it encourages you not just to go out of your way to try to find these shields, but also play well in order to keep them and continue to have the benefits of them. So that adds a lot to the game and is very cool. But in the case of Sonic in particular, these shields have another benefit, which is that they replace his insta-shield with a different type of air action, unique for each one. The fire shield gives him a forward-moving air dash, the electric shield gives him a double jump, and the bubble shield gives him a bounce for a high jump. Which again, makes these shields much more useful than the ones in the previous games, and gives you a much greater incentive to actually go out of your way to get them. So. That is a very nice improvement over the previous games, and it actually means that there's something of worthwhile to actually look for in the hidden nooks and crannies, thus actually kind of encouraging exploration a little bit more than the previous games have done, so that's very cool. And as far as Sonic goes and just base playing the game, that's it for Sonic 3K. I've already covered everything about the physics and mechanics of the classic Sonic games in the previous videos, so let's move on to the greater game at large and see what else is different in this game compared to the previous ones. And the two biggest new things for Sonic 3K is that number one, 
You know how in previous Sonic games you had, you know, zones and they had a number of acts in them, and every act in a zone would use the same stage gimmicks and that would kind of theme those couple of levels together. That's still true in this game, but in Sonic 3K actually, all the zones are two acts, but for Act 2, they actually introduce even more level gimmicks unique to just Act 2, so you come to a zone and it has its level gimmicks, and then you get to Act 2, and those level gimmicks are still there, but now they throw extra ones on top of it, so now every single level of the game has its own unique gimmicks and different attributes and stuff like that, adding even more variety than was already in Sonic 2. More is kind of the name of the game here with Sonic 3K. Pretty much in every aspect, they just took Sonic 2 and was just like, more, more, more. Which brings us to the second big difference of this game, which is now there is a boss fight at the end of every single act. Which, if you've watched my previous videos, might not sound like a very good thing because up to this point, the bosses have been pretty bad in these games, but you would have to think that with so many more bosses in the game, those are a much bigger focus in this game, so surely the bosses must be better, right? Nope! There's more of them, but they're still pretty much just as bad as they are. So actually, in my book, I would say that the fact that there's a boss at the end of every level is actually a negative, as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, that's just me. I'm kind of extreme about the whole no bosses thing. I'm sure most people would disagree with me on that. Now, let's get into the levels of Sonic 3K, because there's a lot of interesting stuff to talk about with this. And the first thing I want to mention is that Sonic 3K is a big game. It is beefy. The previous two Sonic games, both of them are pretty much the same length at about like 45 minutes to 50, maybe an hour if you're not quite as good. But that's about it. They're relatively short games. Sonic 1 had six zones, Sonic 2 had like nine real full zones, and then some extra crap with the sky chase that sucked. Sonic 3K, however, has 12 full traditional zones, and all of the levels are much bigger than they were in the previous games. This game is now like two and a half hours for a casual playthrough, making it way bigger than the previous games. Bigger than both of them combined, actually. Maybe you could argue that's cheating, because it's technically kind of two games in one, but they were meant to be one game, so I would argue that it's just a much bigger game than the other two. And thankfully, there's no dumb minigame sky chase auto-scroller that lasts 15 frickin' minutes, or any stupid shit like that in this game. It is just traditional Sonic momentum-based platforming the whole way through. Until the very end, and we'll get there. Before we get to that, we should talk special stages, and once again, special stages work very differently than they did in the previous game. Now the whole 50 coin thing is completely out of the window, don't need to worry about that at all whatsoever, which, personally, I definitely prefer because it means you don't have to carefully tiptoe your way forward all the time to try and go for a Chaos Emerald, you can just play normally, because now the way it works is that Hidden in all the levels somewhere are these giant rings that you can find, and you jump in one, and bam, you just get sent right to the special stage. Much simpler and much more elegant than what was in previous games, but again, it does give you slightly greater incentive to actually explore these levels and check out the other paths than just try to figure out what are the optimal ones for trying to beat the level as quickly as possible. Now you can actually check out the lower paths to try to find out where these big rings are, because they're in all the different tiers of level, not just the top. So special stages in Sonic 3K, the deal this time is you're moving on a grid, and there's a bunch of blue spheres, and you gotta get them. If you touch a red sphere, then you get ejected out. Get all the blue spheres, and you win. Also, if the blue spheres are oriented in some kind of shape, then you can get the exterior of the shape, and it will transform all the blue spheres into coins that you can pick up, which don't really do anything. If you get all the coins, then you'll get a continue, which is useless because lives are removed if you want for Angel Island Revisited, and are also just stupid in general and not useful if you're just good at the game. But they also give you 50,000 points because they still believe people gave a shit about points at this time in gaming. So really, going for all the coins for the perfect completion is pretty pointless. Really, you just gotta get all the blue spheres for the Chaos Emerald. And you know what? Unlike all the previous games, these special stages are not bullshit. 
They control well. You can actually see what's happening. It's not just about memorization. You can actually react to what's going on. It's very possible to clear these special stages first try, no problem. In fact, I only failed like two special stages in my entire recent playthrough. So in that way, it is a massive improvement over the previous games. But... These special stages also have a problem, in my opinion, which is that they're not particularly fun. They're not very interesting, not very engaging, not very challenging. I mean, over time you'll speed up, which makes it a little bit harder, but not really that much. And they're just not very engaging. I don't know what to tell you. It's just like, I play these special stages, and I don't get annoyed or frustrated or anything like that. But I also don't feel excited, or ha like I'm having a lot of fun, or anything. I just feel nothing. I feel emptiness when I play these special stages. They're just so... Blah. So at the end of the day, I'd still rather just ignore these things completely than go for them, because it's just not very fun. And another thing I want to mention with these special stages is that I don't enjoy the gameplay of any of them, and they also really fuck with the pacing when you play through a Sonic game because, especially in Sonic 3K, if you know where all these rings are, you can go from special stage to special stage very quickly and basically front load your playthrough with all seven special stages at the very beginning and you're barely doing any, like, proper Sonic platforming gameplay. And it just really fucks with the pacing of the game to constantly be entering these special stages. It's just another reason I don't like going for these things. I'm here for the momentum-based Sonic platforming. I'm not here to do these shitty minigames that aren't even fun. So while it's nice to have these big rings scattered all over the place that you can use to enter them, I don't really want to enter them, so... Eh, they're not really worth me going out of my way to search for. But, you know, for some people, they'll be into this, and I get that. Personally, I normally never go for these things, ever, and I enjoy the game a hell of a lot more for it. In fact, I've even heard from some people that they feel almost obligated to go for the Chaos Emeralds, and that they don't really find the special stages that enjoyable either, but they just have to go for them. They feel compelled because it's kind of what the game wants you to do. It, like, encourages you, like, if you beat the game without the Chaos Emeralds for all of these classic games, they tell you, like, you didn't get the Chaos Emeralds, try again, but really, getting the Chaos Emeralds is just making the game less fun to play, so... it's... Bleh, bleh, bleh. This whole special stage Chaos Emerald thing, honestly, I don't really think it was a good addition to the series. And it seems like they're just keeping it around just because it was there, and it's an iconic part of the series, but really... You gotta just take a step back and go, is this actually beneficial to the game? Does it actually add to it? Is it really a positive thing to put in these games? And personally, I would argue no, which is why I say that things like special stages and boss fights, I would say would be better off not being in the game at all. Though maybe that's just because up to this point they've never really been particularly good. Maybe if we could actually get good special stages and good boss fights, that would change my tune. But so far, that's yet to happen. But wait! We're not done yet talking about Chaos Emeralds and Special Stages, because of course, Sonic 3 has its set of Chaos Emeralds, and then Sonic & Knuckles has its set of Chaos Emeralds. So when you put the two games together, how do you make the player play through both sets of Special Stages to get both sets of Emeralds? Well, this is where the Super Emeralds come in. So you get the seven Chaos Emeralds, and you get Super Sonic as normal. But once you hit the Sonic and Knuckles half of the game, you get sent over here. And if you have all seven Chaos Emeralds by this point, then they get turned into the Super Emeralds. And now you can do even more of these special stages, hooray, uh, to collect the Super Emeralds. And once you get all seven Super Emeralds, then you unlock Hyper Sonic, who is basically the exact same thing as Super Sonic, but you can now breathe underwater, okay? But more importantly, you get this Hyper Flash move, which is basically just an omnidirectional air dash that you can do that also is a screen clear and will just destroy any enemy in the area while you do it. So Hypersonic essentially irrelevantizes the game even more than Supersonic does, but I actually think that this air dash ends up making him a lot more fun because it makes him actually play different and unique from the other characters, 
and it's actually a lot more fun than Supersonic. I actually quite like Hypersonic as a concept. I'm still not in love with the execution where you gotta get the 50 coins, because most of the time I'm not gonna do that, but whatever. It's an improvement. I'll take it. I think it's a cool idea, and having this extra move that makes Hypersonic stand out is definitely appreciated. I would actually really prefer if they just made Hypersonic or Supersonic, whatever, a standalone character that you unlock by doing the special stage stuff, and then you can pick that character in the character select, and then you'll just start as Hypersonic with 50 coins at the beginning of the level, and you can just blaze through it kind of like an alternate playthrough where you play as a souped-up character, rather than it being a power-up for a normal character that kind of just breaks all of their gameplay because you don't need to acknowledge the game anymore. Having it separate in a totally different mode, I think, would be much better. If any of the Sonic 3 Air devs happen to be watching this, you guys should consider adding Hypersonic to the Time Attack mode as a selectable character. I think that'd be pretty cool. Anyway, along with unlocking Supersonic or Hypersonic, depending on which set of emeralds you get, you also unlock access to the final boss fight of the game. After you do the normal final boss, then you do this final final boss, uh, where you're either Hypersonic or Supersonic, doesn't make a difference, they play exactly the same in this sequence, and you're flying in space, and you gotta chase after Eggman and his ship while he runs away with the Master Emerald and whatever, and it's not very good because it's a Sonic boss fight, so this isn't really a worthwhile reward either. Uh... Hmm... Moving on. In addition to special stages, this game also adds bonus stages, and these are accessed in the Sonic 2 way. You get 50 coins, you hit a checkpoint, the stars appear, and then you jump in to enter the bonus stage. And there's three different bonus stages that you can enter that are dependent on how many coins you hit the checkpoint with. You got this one, where you climb to the end on these, like, weird gravity orb things, and these are my favorite ones, because they're, like, platforming, and, you know, you have an objective of getting to the end, so these are kind of cool. You got these ones here, where you're in this giant pit with springs on the end, and there's a, like, gumball dispenser machine thing. And by the way, these bonus stages are for getting extra coins and lives and shields, because the dispensers put out, you know, these different gumballs, I guess, that are the different elemental shields. So if you want a specific one, here's an opportunity to try to get one. Same thing with the other one. Anyway, and the last type of bonus stage is, uh... Oh my god. It's the Sonic 1 special stages combined with pinball bullshit. Oh my god, get me the fuck out of here. Okay, that's enough talking about the bonus stages. Uh, they're neat, but ultimately I try to avoid them as much as I can because they're kind of a waste of time. Just like the special stages are. Now then, Time Attack. The real meat and potatoes of a Sonic game for me. How is it in Sonic 3K? Well, this is where things get very, very interesting, because I got a lot to say on this. So you know how there's a lot of people out there who would say Sonic 2 is my favorite classic Sonic game? And to a lot of big Sonic fans, it's like no question that Sonic 3K is definitely much better than Sonic 2 is, and a lot of people will think that the only way you could possibly have the opinion that Sonic 2 is the best classic game is if you haven't actually played Sonic 3 & Knuckles, or you're an idiot. And I myself have been someone of this type of opinion for a long time as well, but in my recent playthroughs to make these videos, really paying attention to the game and the design and the levels and the mechanics and everything, I've started to see a little bit more of how I do understand how you could think Sonic 2 is better than 3K, because there is something that is pretty substantial that you could argue Sonic 2 does better than Sonic 3K and that would be the level design. Not saying the level design of Sonic 3K is bad, of course not. It's very, very good and still follows all the same rules of Sonic level design. You know, encouraging replays, having the multi-tiered level design, higher path is the more difficult but faster path, all that good stuff, it's still there. And Sonic 3K is a much larger game than Sonic 2 is. Many more levels for you to enjoy in Time Attack and get that kind of experience out of, so that's also very good. The levels are also much larger, which is both a positive and a negative, because larger levels mean longer levels, and longer levels make it more difficult to time attack well, because 
If a level is only, you know, 30 seconds to a minute long, then it's very easy to feel very good about running the level over and over, because if you mess something up, you don't really lose that much time doing another run of it. But if a level is two and a half to four minutes long, suddenly doing it over again is now almost four times as long, if not longer. With the level being so much longer, you're just naturally going to make more mistakes. So having the same level of requirement on yourself where you're like, no, I'm going to get it perfect, no mistakes at all, it's going to be really hard to get an absolutely perfect run of levels this long. I wouldn't say that's an inherently bad thing about the time attack experience of Sonic 3K, because some people do like doing the marathon type of thing, and accepting the fact that you're going to make a lot more mistakes, that gives you a lot more room to improve, because now you really can run it over and over and over, and there are a lot more opportunities for you to improve your time. So it's really just different. Personally, I would say I prefer kind of shorter levels because they are more time attack friendly for getting really, really nice clean runs, but they're both still very good. It's the level design itself of Sonic 3K that I think is what can arguably make it inferior to Sonic 2. Because Sonic 2 is what really established the whole multi-path level design of Sonic. You know, high path, fast path, low path, easy slow path, all that stuff. And Sonic 3K does that, but it also has a lot more linearity in its levels. It has a lot more bottlenecks where all the paths converge into this extended platforming sequence that you have to go through no matter what. In fact, there are some levels of this game that have almost no branching paths, or very, very few, and the ones they do have are very short, and then they very quickly meet back up with the other paths, and some levels just feel like you're just playing through a platforming stage. It doesn't have that same really big, massive feel that you get from the Sonic 2 levels with how many paths they are, even though these levels are physically larger than the ones in Sonic 2. But you have to go through the whole thing so it doesn't feel as wide in terms of where you can go, because you have to go through every area the level is designed to take you through. But this is only the case for some zones in Sonic 3K. Some zones are very open and have lots of paths and really feel like proper Sonic levels with lots of different ways to go. But then some zones feel a lot more linear and restricted, and those restricted zones I definitely feel are the weaker ones that are definitely a lot less fun to play through than the uh, more open zones. And it's not just a couple, it's not just one or two, it's almost like a third or maybe even half of the zones are like this. Like, Hydro City is one of these zones. I would argue this is probably one of the worst zones in the game, actually, even though most people tend to like it. But I don't really like it because it is much more restrictive and linear than other zones. It has a couple of split paths, but far less than something like Flying Battery, which has tons of different pathways all over the place, and almost never forces you to play the same area. Also, Hydro City really breaks the rule of classic Sonic games kind of tricking you into passivity, but encouraging you to do something active. Hydro City has a lot of these sequences where you're just going through loop-de-loops and shafts and tubes and stuff, and there really is nothing to do here other than just let the sequence play out. So there's a lot of not really doing much in Hydro City, so I think it's a pretty not good zone. Marble Garden is another zone with limited split paths and a lot of linearity, and the zone itself I'm just not a very big fan of. Launch Base is like half and half with its linearity versus open paths, and Angel Island is also kind of like that. The Sonic 3 half of Sonic 3K especially is definitely a lot heavier on the more linear design, whereas when you get to the Sonic & Knuckles half of the game, Mushroom Hill is a fantastic zone. I would say probably the best original zone from the classic games. It's just got so many paths. It's so fast, so fun, great level gimmicks. Mushroom Hill is freaking awesome. And I also already mentioned Flying Battery. Tons of split paths there. But then, of course, we have Sandopolis, which has the largest and longest linear sequences of, like, any of the zones in the whole game. And then on top of that, we're back to the freaking crap from Hilltop, where you have to wait for this sand to rise, and it's just... Why? Why would you do this? 
Lava Reef has a healthy amount of split paths, and so does Doomsday Zone to a degree. But just in general, the level design of Sonic 3K is a little bit more all over the place than it was in Sonic 2. Sonic 2, the level design is far more consistent and really following, you know, kind of the rules of Sonic level design. Sonic 3K follows those rules most of the time, but a lot of the time it says, all right, and now you're going to do this one platforming sequence that you have to do for this level. And it does that quite a bit. And having less focus on that split path level design, to me, does make Sonic 3K feel a little worse to play for Time Attack than Sonic 2 does in some ways, but in some ways it's also better, and I'll get to that later. But the Sonic 2 level design, it just feels so focused on the core design philosophy of Sonic levels, and it's really like they knew exactly what they wanted that game to be, and they made it exactly like that. Sonic 3K, it just feels a little bit more loosey-goosey, like they were just trying a bunch of stuff to see what would work, and some of it worked and some of it didn't. Sonic 3K, however, does ultimately, I think, mostly overcome this minor issue just because there are so many levels in this game that ultimately when you compare how many good levels there are in Sonic 2 versus how many bad levels there are versus Sonic 3K and how many good and bad levels that has, it ends up being that Sonic 3K still ends up with more good levels just by sheer volume because the game is just so much bigger. But on a percentage perspective, I would say Sonic 2 overall has a much higher average of good levels versus bad ones. So overall, Sonic 2 is, you know, much more even quality all around. Sonic 3K, I would say, is a bit more up and down, but just because there's so much, the overall package ends up being a bit higher, if that makes sense. If what I'm saying makes any sense at all, I don't know. I'm kind of just going here, just throwing my thoughts out for my recent playthroughs. Maybe I've got no idea what I'm talking about, for all I know. Another thing about Sonic 3K's level design that you could argue is both a positive and a negative is that it's so freaking big, dude. These levels are gigantic. They're almost too big in some ways, I would argue. Because they're so big and they have so much winding around going right and then left and then up and then down all over the place that... It can really be hard to keep track of where the heck you are in the level and which way you're supposed to be going. Like, you know, you just get launched to some part of the level and you're like, am I supposed to be going right here or going left? I'm not 100% sure. If the levels are just so big and all over the place that you can just really get turned around if you're not already super familiar with the level design. Though that's really only a problem for like your first playthrough and for learning the levels. Once you actually get to, you know, plotting out your runs for the time attack and running them, it's not a problem at all. And you could argue it's not really that much of a problem because having big levels is just really cool because there's lots of game to play. So again, something that's not a major issue, but I would call it a knock against this game when comparing it to Sonic 2, because in Sonic 2, I'd never feel uncertain about which way I'm supposed to be going. Whereas in Sonic 3K, I do sometimes, which is a downgrade. Another thing I want to mention really quickly is the vanilla playthrough slash the, you know, exploring the level and trying to plot out fast paths and stuff like that. I've talked about in my Sonic 2 video about the, you know, thing with Sonic games where they just throw hazards at you and you could have never possibly reacted to them and stuff. And I've talked about how I don't really think that's much of a problem in these games because there are ways to predict when hazards are going to be there even if you can't see them. But that mainly only applies for when you're going like super duper freaking fast. But what about when you're going at, like, your base top speed and you're not blazing through the level, you're just, you know, going along, just normal speed platforming? That sometimes could be a bit of an issue in the original games, I feel, because you're still moving at a pretty good clip at the base default speeds of these characters, and, you know, you could just run into something and not have the time that you need to react to it. That's a very common criticism of the classic Sonic games, but I feel that mainly comes from the fact that people are usually playing the original versions of these games, and that's part of why in these videos I've been discouraging from playing the original versions of these games, because, 
One of the really nice things that really helps with Sonic is widescreen. It might not seem like that big of a deal, but when you're moving at the speeds that you do in these games, just having that extra screen real estate gives you so much more time to react to stuff that's coming. When I'm just playing through the game, you know, normally, casually, not going for time attack, or I'm exploring the levels to try and discover what the fastest paths are, in the original games, I feel the need to walk slowly everywhere because I'm so afraid that I'm gonna get hit by something and that's gonna knock me down to a lower path and I'm gonna have to start all over again. And so I really want to be very, very careful to make sure that I can react to what's coming. But when you're playing these new versions of the game with widescreen, I feel a lot more comfortable just moving at full speed all the time because you have a lot more time to react to things. So that was just a quick thing I wanted to mention, is how significant widescreen is in these games for making them feel and play so much better. Anyway, back to the level design of Sonic 3K. I know I gave a lot of criticism to the more linear structure of a lot of these levels, but there's a good reason that they have this more linear structure, and that's because they kind of have to do that to compensate for the fact that Sonic 3K is the game that introduced multiple playable characters with different abilities. You got two extra characters you can play as in Sonic 3K beyond just Sonic, Tails and Knuckles. So Tails is kind of considered like the easy mode of the game, because instead of the insta-shield, his air action is that he can fly. You can mash the jump button while you're flying to ascend, and then you can let go of it and Tails will slowly descend. He can't fly forever, he'll eventually get tired, but you can fly quite a bit with Tails, and it allows you to, you know, take shortcuts you normally wouldn't be able to, skip over platforming sequences that you normally wouldn't be able to, make up for mistakes where if you fall down to a low path, you can just fly back up. In many, many ways, Tails is considered the easy mode, but I don't necessarily think that makes him not worth playing for experienced players because you can still use his flight in advanced ways for unique shortcuts that only he can do. Here's a cool thing to show you. Tails' flight does still obey the laws of momentum, so if you jump and then you fly at the very top of your jump, you're gonna be relatively level starting out, and you're gonna have to ascend normally like you would normally as Tails. But if you jump and then immediately start flying, that upward momentum you have from your jump gets carried into your flight, and you will get this really big upward burst of speed that will make you ascend very, very quickly, and let you do unique, cool movement stuff that only Tails could do. So, it's definitely still worthwhile to time attack as Tails as well as Sonic. And there are some routes specifically made for Tails that only he can get to with his flying, so it really does feel like you're playing the game differently, not just that it's becoming easier, but it also works to make the game easier for less experienced players. So it's a very well-designed thing. It's both a tool that beginners and high-level players can both really get a lot of use out of. So Tails is very, very well-designed. Now for Knuckles, he is kind of like the hard mode of the game. So Knuckles, first of all, he doesn't jump as high as Sonic and Tails do, but to compensate for that, he has the ability to glide, and when he glides into a wall, he'll start climbing, and then you can go up and down on the wall freely as you want. Now what's particularly interesting about Knuckles gliding is that it does not obey the rules of momentum that Sonic games normally do. When he starts gliding, he moves at a fixed speed, regardless of what amount of speed he had already up to that point previously. And he will accelerate if he glides for a longer period of time, but his, you know, normal velocity does not transfer into his glide. It is a set one individual speed. Which normally you might think I would criticize because of how much I like the momentum mechanics of Sonic. But actually, I think this is very good and very interesting that Knuckles has a move that doesn't have to obey the laws of momentum. It gives him a unique way to move that the other characters do not have, where from like a vertical jump with no forward movement, he doesn't have to slowly start moving and accelerate. He can just instantly start moving forward in a different sort of jump arc than any of the other characters can do, which is very, very interesting. Also, his vertical momentum is kind of preserved when he starts a glide. Like, if you're going low and you activate a glide, he will still descend a little bit before kind of, like, leveling out and going into that forward glide. And you can actually use this for some really cool stuff. 
called a super glide, where the properties of bouncing on enemies from tall heights and then launching really high up also is affected on the glide, and so if you jump onto, say, an enemy or a monitor, and then you glide right before you hit it, then the bounce back up will be enhanced by the properties of the glide and let you just go soaring. So that's really cool. Another interesting thing about Knuckles Glide is that when you stop gliding, Knuckles comes to a complete standstill no matter what speed he was moving at when you were gliding. Again, this gives Knuckles a very unique movement pattern that the other characters cannot do, because Knuckles, if he wants, can stop on a dime. No matter how fast you're going, if you just jump, glide, and then stop and land immediately, you'll stop on a dime just like that. This gives Knuckles an unrivaled ability to change directions from high speeds, and gives him all sorts of different movement opportunities. Also, you can glide in the opposite direction of the way you're going currently, so that's another way that he can break the laws of momentum to have a very unique movement pattern to the other characters, and it really adds an extra layer of depth onto his movement. You might think that these momentum-less uh, movement mechanics would actually make him a less deep character, but I would argue it makes him an even deeper character than the others, because on top of all of the typical momentum-based mechanics that you normally have in Sonic, you now have this option to sprinkle in these more binary sorts of movement mechanics, and really do whatever is optimal for speed at the various different situations you're in. It gives you a lot more to think about and a lot more decision-making on how to move around in the world. Breaking away from momentum a little bit and adding stuff that breaks that into Sonic, it turns out, works very well, and it makes Knuckles my favorite character to play as in this game. He is really, really fun. And similarly to Tails, Knuckles does have some unique parts of the level design that take advantage of his gliding and climbing that only really he could get through, which is very cool. But we're not done yet, there's actually even more unique to Knuckles than as Tails, because another thing Knuckles can do, as just kind of a passive ability he has, is he can break certain specific rock structures that exist in the levels that Sonic and Tails have no way of getting past, but Knuckles just touches it and it breaks. This gives him access to totally unique paths that nobody else could go on at all, and these paths really take advantage of Knuckles and his unique mechanics, far more than the unique paths that he can just take, you know, randomly splayed around the level. And in fact, these paths that are specifically built for Knuckles are so robust that sometimes his levels end up playing very, very differently than Sonic or Tails, where most of the level he is in completely different areas from them, and in fact, some of his levels are 100% completely unique from the levels that Sonic and Tails go through. Angel Island Act 2, for example, Knuckles has zero access to the level that Sonic and Tails play whatsoever. He has a completely unique level for Angel Island Act 2 that Sonic and Tails do not get to go to at all whatsoever, and so it's very specifically tailored for his moveset. And he has a couple of levels like this and many areas that are specific just to him. And I think this is absolutely awesome to have unique level design for each character. It really makes it worthwhile to play as all of them, and in my sake, learn to time attack the game as all the different characters, because not only are you using a different moveset that slightly changes how you get through the areas, but you have totally unique areas that that character is only able to go through because of their unique abilities, which then allows it to really take advantage of their unique abilities, because if every area had to be that every character could go through that area, then that would put a lot of limitations on how you could design levels. But by making it so that certain characters get unique areas just for them, it really opens up what you can do with the level design for a lot more variety. And by the way, in case it wasn't clear, those special shield abilities, the double jump, the bounce, and the air dash, only Sonic can do those. That's kind of his compensation for the fact that Tails and Knuckles have way more air movement than Sonic does. He gets those unique abilities that buff him up in various different ways. And by the way, they also do use Knuckles' lower jump height to also restrict him from areas that Sonic and Tails can get to, forcing him onto paths that only he goes on. So Knuckles' playthrough is actually substantially different than Sonic and Tails. Sonic and Tails basically play the same game, with Tails being able to access a couple of areas Sonic can't. 
but Knuckles game is very, very different. Like, I would say even if you're not into the whole time attack thing, it's at the very least worthwhile to play a game as Sonic and as Knuckles, because they have very different playthroughs from each other. Knuckles even sometimes has unique or more difficult boss fights than what Sonic ends up fighting. So with the addition of this extra playable character thing, they really, really put in some effort to make it worthwhile to play as all the different characters on offer, and it's absolutely awesome. And this is why I don't really think the more linear level design of Sonic 3K is that much of a problem, because it is more linear on a character-by-character -character basis. Like, when you play through a level as Sonic, his path might end up being fairly linear, but that's only because the reason it's linear is because the alternate paths aren't just following the typical, you know, high-low structure, but they're also gating off specific paths for the different characters, where Sonic goes through the one single linear path, and so does Tails, but then Knuckles does not go on that path at all. And in the end, I think that ultimately makes Sonic 3K a better game for Time Attack, because now you have more characters to play as that all have different optimal paths through the levels, giving way more replay value to the game than it had before, because now you can play the level in so many different ways. Every time you play a level as a character and you want to time attack it, you have to relearn what the optimal path is depending on your character. And it's super freaking cool. So in reality, Sonic 2 only has the leg up on Sonic 3K, in my opinion, for this single character playthrough because it is more focused, as I said, because it's built specifically for Sonic's moveset and nothing else. With Sonic 3K, because they were trying to make paths for more characters that really take advantage of their abilities, it would be very hard to make multiple paths per character, and then also within those have multiple paths that allow for the different structured tier level design of typical Sonic. So I totally understand why there is a substantially larger amount of forced linear areas in this game than there are in Sonic 2, and I would say that it's totally worth it, because overall it makes the game way more fun to play as all these different characters. You saw in my previous videos that I was playing as the other characters in Sonic 1 and 2, because they were added in later versions that you can play, you know, the older games with these characters and their unique abilities. But it's not quite the same as it is here in Sonic 3K, because those levels weren't really built for those characters, and so for the most part, you're just playing the same level as Sonic using a different moveset, which does offer a different experience, but nowhere near the degree that this game does by having specific unique level design made for all the different characters and their different abilities. So at the end of the day, even though I made that whole argument about I can see why people prefer Sonic 2, I'm still a Sonic 3K man. As far as the classic games go, it doesn't get any better than this. This game is absolutely fantastic. Like I said earlier in the video, Sonic 3K was all about more. More levels, bigger levels, more special stages, more types of special stages, more boss fights, more playable characters, more ways to play through the game, just more, more of everything. And you know what? That made it more awesome. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.